All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a PVT builder tutorial. We'll learn how to drop Dark Templar into our opponent's base and collect three wins. Well, let's get straight into it. Uh, like I said, it's a PVT build, uh, preferably on maps where it's easy to wall off the Reaper jump spot. So in the current map pool, that would be Acropolis and Thunderbird as the two main maps. The way you'd want to build your first pylon is a bit far away, uh, ab ab about five or six blocks away from the, the Reaper jump spot. Then you wall off with your cyber core here and you put your gateway closer to your nexus. This way, in case the Reaper goes in, your gateway will be able, able to rally the adept towards the Reaper rather quickly. Now, we're gonna start very standard in this kind of builder. So you see, gateway over here. In case the Reaper comes in, you want your adept to protect your probes as soon as possible. We open with a 16 gateway. 17 assimilator and we scout after our gateway make sure that there's no early game shenanigans from the terran no two gas no proxy barracks or any of that kind of stuff um, so that we can continue as usual uh, once our gas finishes we just start rallying workers into our gas we always want to have 16 workers on probes um, once we are 19 out of 23 we start rallying towards our natural to build our nexus now at this time we scout our opponent with our probe we see everything is normal and we continue with our nexus so nexus goes down 20 supply as usual and here comes our cyber core walling off the first reaper spot now as the t drop is a build that you prefer to have hidden um you want to do as much as possible to deny any kind of scouting from happening so after we build our assimilator, our second assimilator at 21 supply, we immediately run down with the probe to build that assimilator to build a pylon downstairs and we can start a wall on the low ground with that. So we'll be using a robotics facility and two gateways to wall the low ground. Um, and in that way, it should be almost impossible for our opponent to scout anything. Now, once our cyber core finishes, we start an adapt warp gate and once money allows it, we'll also start a Twilight Council. We want to chrono our adept the moment we start it. I forgot it a couple of seconds. Here we go, should be from the start. And then we start a Twilight Council the moment we can. Um, once our natural finishes, we send the two probes that are oversaturating the main towards that natural and we change our rally point towards our natural base. Please note that after we build our adept, we don't build a second unit. All we get is an adept. We're not getting a stalker. This is to get the fastest DT drop possible. We still get a stalker eventually, but first we get all of our tech structures. So as you can see right now, we have 150 minerals and 100 gas. We will use that money to build a robotics facility. And then we send a probe back here. And th this is how we start the wall, basically. Now, we chrono all chrono boosts so far go into our probes. We will use one chrono boost later on to go into our robo so that we can build a war prism and we can you know warp in dts on the other side of the map as i said before no second warp gate no, no seventh gateway unit yet this is very important please don't make the mistake of building a stalker your build will be extremely delayed and a lot worse so once we have the gas and the money available after our robotics facility we start our dark shrine we add two extra gateways in the wall and as you can see this is basically a full wall together with the adept no Hellions will be able to come past, no Reaper will be able to come past, and we're practically safe. After we build our prison, which we chrono boost, we finally start our Stalker. And after our Stalker, we will start our third pylon. Now, I like to build my third pylon in this location, or in this location, just so that we have some extra vision in case we're being dropped or we're being liberator harassed, we get a, an extra warning. Of course, you can also just build Research. your third pylon over here if you prefer that. It's completely possible, and if, if you like having a, a quick warping pylon next to a nexus, just do that. I build a, my fourth pylon immediately as well, and after that, I take my third gas. Now, as my warp gates finish, and my stalker is finally finishing up as well. I do not warp anything in until I warp the DTs on the other side of the map. So Dark Shrine is about to finish. And please note that this was a build order with an early scout. And I still managed to get my first three DTs warped in at about 420, 421. 
that is extremely fast. A lot of Terrans, uh, most of them, their first drop hits around 430, 435. So please be aware that as you are dropping your units, Terran can also be dropping mines, but um, TTs usually are better than mines as TTs are completely invisible. And it's very difficult for Terrans to hit something they can't see um, for all races. But a lot of people tend to forget that invisible units are extremely good. Um, I know the, the the StarCraft proverb is when behind Dark Shrine, but imagine if units are already good when you are behind. Imagine how good they are when you're even or ahead in a game. And that's what we're doing here. We're really, you know, just being way ahead of the meta game. Instead of just going Dark Shrine when behind, just go Dark Shrine when you're even and see how that works out. Well, we see us drop two Dark Templars into the main base. Usually what you do is one DT will go over here towards the ramp, start dealing with uh, tech labs, reactors, maybe a depot or something, or units that are over here. One DT will go to the main natural uh, mineral line and one DT will go to the, the natural mineral line. So he will need three scans to clear it all up or he'll need a Raven to clear this all up. Now, in the back of this, once we... Um, can spend our attention here of course this is the this is the main attraction anything else macro is all secondary it's it's nice to do but it's really not as important as making sure your dts do maximal damage um, and you don't lose your prism so we build a nexus once money allows we start charge and we start our forge uh, we also want to add a couple of pylons of course uh, like i said this is the main attraction um, this also if you realize your opponent has no detection, is a good time to start bad mannering him a little bit, explain to him how he lost the game, why he lost the game, and how he should improve for the next game. Uh, it's always good to make friends like that. Um, once you hit 48 workers, you start adding extra gateways. So perhaps you need to do a small worker cut. That's completely fine. Just add three or five extra gateways. Um, usually I do three gates immediately. And then I add two gates later on as a, after I start my armor. So I should start my armor now and then I'll add two more gateways, which is around 50 workers. Um, and your goal is to just go into a charge, salad, stalker army off of three gas. Um, just charge salad. After that, you can get blink. And you basically play, uh, play it out like it's a, a standard blink or a standard charge opener. So I can show a little more. Just continue worker production. Um, continue warping in units and you should be able to even with a dt drop get very high supply at around the 620 630 mark as you can see i just keep warping in sellouts you get your charge done before his stim finishes most of the time your plus one might be a little bit delayed but you have eight gateways you have good saturation you see i have 55 probes at the 620 mark um, which is a very important time that's usually when terran pushes hit um i have 102 supply and I'm, I'm, I'm just generally in a good spot. I have a prism on the map. Well, this AI very easy. Didn't really like this too much. So he left rather quick. Um, so let's head into a game that I played against a, a player earlier. Let's go. Wow. Straight back into the next game. Um, this is a game I played earlier. Um, against a 6.4k MMR Terran. So that's around rank 24, 25 Grandmaster. And I, I must say, it, it worked rather well. The game didn't immediately end with the DTs, but I believe I got such a such a nice lead out of it that um, it, there wasn't much he could do. The game ended rather quickly. I'm not going to show the whole game, I'm just going to show the start. And I would like to tell you guys that this is probably one of the hardest builds to execute. As there's a lot of things you need to do at the same time. Um, most of the time you're dropping DTs, you're being dropped by mines or something else is happening on your side of the map. And at the same time, you still need to macro. Now, most of the time, I mess up at least two out of the three things. So most of the time what happens is I either lose my DT drop, um, I lose all my probes to mine drops, or I completely forget to macro. Actually, most of the time, two of those things happen. So most of the times I'll lose my DT drop and I forget the macro, but at least I won't take any damage of the mines. In my head, the two most important things here are to not take damage from the mines um and then to micro your dt drop and then the third priority is the macros that's really not all that important um I'll, I'll, I'll skip the early game a little bit i'll just show once again how to wall you see pylon over here cybercore to wall off the the reaper spot 
and then the gateway close towards your main min mineral line, just in case a reaper comes in. My opponent opened with a marine, so in this case it wasn't necessary, but it's still nice to do. Um, gives you some peace of mind. Uh, I wall up with a second five on, on the low ground. And if we speed it up a little, you see a Chrono Boosty adapt immediately the way it should be. Twilight Council into a Robotics Facility. And I believe I accidentally built my Stalker before I built my before I built my prison. You see, Dark Shrine, Gateway, Gateway, Prism Start. And as you can see, our opponent is getting a, a lot of Marines. He's opting for a Mind Drop, which is a pretty decent build against this. Probably one of the more annoying ones to deal with. Um, especially Mind Drop into Raven is very bad for me. As that's, it, I don't want to call it a hard counter, but it's one of the, the better counters. Luckily for me, he opens with a, a Liberator, so that's kind of nice for me. Ideally, he wouldn't see my Prism here. That would be a, a big advantage. Sadly, he does see my Prism, and this delays my warp in a little bit. As you can see, I would love to warp in over here. Sadly, all of his Marines are here. So in this case, I just, you know, I bite, I, I eat my loss, and I'm like, all right, I'll just warp it in here. I'm a little later than I'd like to be. Um, I also, of course, saw his meta back. So here, my main priority really is dealing with those mines, and then after that, dealing with my my own DT drop. So usually, I'd say send two DTs into the prism, one DT over here. But because I was a little bit panicked, I sent two DTs to his natural. This time, it works out okay. But this really is the main priority. You just want to deal with those mines, make sure you don't lose a lot of workers. And you got two units to deal with it. After a while, you get a a second warp in and you'll get four units to deal with it. Just sacrifice one probe into the mines and you should be fine. So my two DTs are doing some work into his natural base. Prism gets into the main. Um, don't necessarily need to do damage. Losing the prism would be really really bad for you. So always try to fly to safety and then recall. If there's a Viking just don't go in at all most of the time. Uh, can actually remember this one. That's kind of sad but like I said, just macro is probably the final priority. He's, you know, as you can see, it's also difficult for him. He was floating about 800 minerals. I was floating about 400, 500 minerals. So it's a, it's a very tough scenario for both players. As a lot of things are happening at the same time, and the faster player in that in that case wins. Now, usually I'd say the lower the level that you play at, the better DTs get. So if you're in diamond or if you're in in masters. Um, this build should work way, way better than it does for me in, in High Grandmaster. And anything below Diamond, I believe 95% of the time, you should just instantly win if you play this build correctly. Mm. Now the follow-up, like I said, just go into 8 gates, get your forges. Uh, you can keep harassing. Something I like to do if I see a Raven and it's going quite well. Uh, all right, like it, it, it did go quite well already. I killed a bunch of workers. What you can do is you can warp in a couple of extra DTs and do a double arc on drop. So act like it's a little bit of a PBZ. Um, as I'm doing right now, I make two archons and you can do a lot of damage because usually they don't split off a lot of units. As you can see, there's a bunch of units here, a couple here together with the Raven. You can just drop in and uh, perhaps kill a Raven, perhaps just kill a bunch of Marines. Uh, make the Raven spend some energy. Both of it is kind of fine. Still, try to not lose the prism, and from there on out, like I said, just play it like it's a regular charge lot game. Get your extra forges if you see a third CC. Get your extra gases if you see a third CC. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I I hope you get many wins on the ladder. Um, I did manage to win this game in the end, as I got a very big lead from the start. And uh, I hope you guys get many wins too. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you boys next time.